Textile. Once upon a time, textile product mills were prevalent in the New England region surrounding New Haven and supplied the area with a wool fabric for suits. In New London, cotton sheeting and twill. In Bridgeport, elastic, canvas, and lace. In Bristol, knitwear, just to name a few. Apparel manufacturing had a strong presence in New Haven, Connecticut. The Forsyth Dyeing Company in 1868 processed raw and unfinished textiles where the now luxurious Corsair apartments are located on State Street. The company later moved to Wally Avenue and Fitch in 1912 until the year 1924. The Strauss Adler Corset Company, with its historic factory complex at 78 and 84 Olive Street, operated between 1876 and 1998. It was the largest and oldest of the city's corset manufacturers. In the early 1950s, Gant's famous shirt making was established on York Street and Long Wharf. According to a 2015 publication from the Department of Labor, Connecticut is home to over 4,500 manufacturing companies, only a small fragment of these companies being involved in the textile manufacturing industry. Although Connecticut rated number five in the U.S. for productivity, patents per capita, and richness in education, another side of the story emerges. New Haven, home of Yale University, is fueled economically by a high foreign-born and immigrant population, but is marked by a high income disparity rate, number six in the nation, as well as high neighborhood poverty concentration. This has been shown to lead to high racial segregation, an increase in low-income population, recorded at 26% by the latest U.S. Census, food insecurity, and a dreadful financial anxiety. Fast fashion is the second most polluting industry in the world. Harsh dyes are used in the creation of synthetic polyester fibers, which often leak their way into the environment and cause harm to women, children, and wildlife. Most of this material is dumped into landfills, and findings have shown that the average person discards 82 pounds of clothing per year. Out of all this fabric, only 15% of these textiles are donated for reuse. Tina Leah is among the efforts to decrease fast fashion's harmful effects on the environment in order to foster sustainability and decrease the average person's carbon footprint. At the Threads and Needles program at Makehaven, located on Chapel Street, students learn how to shape their own creations from a formless piece of textile. Just as the textile mills from the surrounding New Haven area provided raw material that the apparel manufacturing companies transformed into wearable fashion products, the nonprofit company, Tina Leah, working out of the New Haven located makerspace, creates upcycled products to produce unique garments. The program provides training for manual textile workers who have fallen out of luck in the expanding tech economy that is consuming more and more of the business landscape of the modern world, allowing these disadvantaged workers to rise above their circumstances. Through the program, Catherine Wiley has reached out to aspiring designers, refugees, and the immigrant population of New Haven. Catherine believes these individuals are the key to making the artisan landscape of New Haven less hostile for the artist and those living in it as a whole. Using the lost art of embroidery, dressmaking, millinery, and tailoring, Tina Leah provides an outlet for the stifled and budding talents of the New Haven area. Raised overseas in Africa and in the South Pacific, Tina Leah's director Catherine Wiley has witnessed firsthand the benefit that the artisan sector can provide for the economy. The global artisan economy is valued at $34 billion and has incredible potential as a means of poverty reduction. As part of the artisan economy of New Haven, Tina Lee is focusing on the reduction of poverty by giving their students the skills they need to go out and thrive in the textile market. The program educates its students about the economic and environmental benefits of upcycling. At Tinalia, what we're trying to do is reinstill a sense of self-worth and trying to educate, to find a way to instill value and, and self-esteem by using textile to help the people that nobody uh, have even a thought about and who have great talents. To bring them to the revelation of your home, upcycling and recycling and redoing 
is uh, adding to my self-esteem, the self-esteem of the people that are wearing the items, a, a couple of used items, they go a long way. Tina Leah is creating a positive environment no one else has, where creators can make unique products of self-expression, spur economic growth, and create a more sustainable world. Who wouldn't want a creation that no one else has, all while helping the environment? The Threads and Needles program at Make Haven has touched lives and changed them for the better. Let's see what the students had to say. Hi, my name is Sophie. I'm 58 years old. I kind of come from a rough background. There were times where I would straighten up for a while and I would start trying to do the right thing, but I was never with the right people until now. Since I've met Catherine with needles and threads, my life is just completely changed. I quit using drugs, rededicated my life back to the Lord. When I wake up in the morning, I do my morning devotions and I pray and I carry a little Bible around me. And every time that I think about uh, doing something that's wrong, I pick up my Bible and it's working. It's really working, y'all. My sewing is getting better. My anxiety is going away. I feel good. You know, I feel like I'm getting some self-esteem, which I need a boatload of. It's, I'm not letting it drag me. I'm pulling back. Not only there do we do, we do our sewing and our our classes, and there's so much more. Like, uh, I, we go to church together. We. We talk all the time, you know, I have so many questions about life, you know, because so much stuff that, uh, that that I was involved in, drugs and alcohol, and since then it straightened out. I was at the library, I walked in and I saw a sewing machine, and I saw Catherine, and I saw a lady named Shay. I saw it and I couldn't believe it. I went over and started talking to her. and So I met her I, while she was doing sort of like an outreach work, I guess. I can't it just explain enough how much they've helped me. My name is Kara Strawn and I'm the Knowledge and Evaluation Manager here at the Community Foundation for Greater New Haven. The Community Foundation is enthusiastic about Tenelia and the Threads and Needles program because it truly meets people where they are, translates passion and innate skills that are often undervalued into a means of economic security. In an evolving workforce landscape, creative and new approaches such as Tenelia are greatly needed. What makes Tenelia unique from our perspective is that it integrates business training and craftsmanship, creativity and entrepreneurship into a very accessible package. And I believe they've become a part of the Greater New Haven ecosystem of arts and creative type organizations. And so their programs are only making the entire system stronger. Through the Community Foundation's new and inclusive growth lens, we are deepening our focus on programs and initiatives that create opportunity for all who live in the Greater New Haven region. And Tenelia aims to do just that. The co-op and the Threads and Needle program are about bringing people along, celebrating and cultivating their unique talents, and positioning individuals to support themselves and their families in a way that is true to who they are. My name is Lola. I'm from uh, Congo, Democratic Republic of the Congo. And I've been here in the United States for about six years now. I go to Gateway Community College and I'm upcoming sophomore in the next semester that's coming up. And I love to sew. When I was nine years old, I actually loved playing with my dolls. So like I could literally sit in my room and start making clothes for my doll and then seeing my sister making clothes that makes people happy and I was like, it kinda inspired me. So I decided to do hand sewing for like my clothes and there is this other time also where I had to make a skirt by hands and I was so proud of it. Yeah, because I was a baby when we moved to Burundi right. and pretty much my life is like Burundi because that's the culture that I've learned. I feel like here it's much easier but back in my country you have to do it for yourself like if it's by hands by hands you don't need technology because you know you don't have access to it but my family friends usually my family my dad my mom they usually have contact 
So if like I wanna speak to them, I can ask my mom or my dad, and then I can speak to them, ask them how they're doing and how life is going there. People who want to try to wear different culture clothes, maybe they can have that. And also people who like are from my country, and they feel like they've worn all the African dress and they want to try the American style. I can also like add that. I see myself having my own store and creating clothes, having fashion shows, having my family there. Be confident. If like you feel confident in sewing, then you should go for it. I'm Megan. I spend a lot of time here after work at Make Haven with Regina and with Catherine. First time I sewed, I was in like middle school and I did like a quilt with my grandma. I tried doing clothes a couple of years ago, but they're a lot more work. It takes like a lot of skill and so I think I didn't realize that and somehow I just made a dress and that was awesome. Catherine helped me. And then I decided to, to take this class so I could actually start learning more from experts. We learned how to tailor pants to ourselves and personally I didn't take the class to start a business I took it just to be able to tailor clothes to myself because I'm six feet tall and you know things don't always fit me correctly just mainly to like express myself there's some people that I miss when we were all together we had this sewing circle and it was so it was just such a supportive environment each of us is being empowered in our own like unique way by learning how to sew like I got to learn a lot of different stories from people it's like really empowering to learn a skill and to be able to be your true self because you can really fully express yourself. So I think it's great that everyone's growing in that way. We are being validated for our experiences, for our feelings, positive and negative, both experience and feelings. And we're also being empowered by being taught new skills that could help us in the future. I had a lot of conversations with Catherine where after I just felt like, oh my gosh, like I'm a new human being, you know? You don't have to just fit in, like I can go change the world she's actually impacting people she's shown me that like you can actually do that don't really meet that many people who are actually living their dream ben berkowitz and i'm the chief executive officer of c click fix c click fix is a web platform that helps citizens report things that are broken in the public space to their local government officials and it also helps those local government officials uh, resolve these problems and communicate back effectively with citizens so I, I'm very excited about the Threads and Needle program. Uh, I have been since Catherine introduced me to it. I'm a, one of the founding members of Makehaven and had been on the board of Makehaven at the time when Catherine started uh, Threads and Needles in Makehaven. As an entrepreneur myself, it's important that we present entrepreneurial opportunities and skill building opportunities for everyone. So I think the Threads and Needle program helps make Haven quite a bit. I believe that Threads and Needles has helped to further the diversity at Make Haven. Uh, there is a group of people that have come into the space that would not have otherwise come into the space because either they thought that they didn't belong there or because they didn't have the access to the space for uh, financial means. And so Catherine's done a really great job of bringing in uh, faces that we might not otherwise see there. I also think that the prevalence of sewing and making things with fabric, um, while having already existed at Make Haven, is, is much more relevant now. Um, and so for existing members uh, to be able to see that as another thing that they can do and achieve in Make Haven, uh, that's great. And I think it's great when new members or prospective members come in and they see um, that that particular skill set is part of the fabric of Make Haven and that that might be a reason why you want to join as a member. I, I have really valued new friends through this program, so specifically Catherine and Shay are two people that I have connected to because of the program that I would not have otherwise. It's exciting to see Catherine's enthusiasm, not just for threads and needles and Tinalaya, but um, also just for diversity at Make Haven and Make Haven being a more inclusive community. What's going on world? It's your boy Isaiah Fredericks, aspiring fashion designer and student at the Make Haven Threads and Needles program. Come check this out, it's definitely the place to be. I'm 23 years old and I grew up in here in William, Connecticut. I've knitted on and off since I was like in middle school. I wasn't taking it serious, but now I'm more serious about it, so. I took a life skills class in middle school, back in middle school, but like I said before, I wasn't serious about it and now I'm more serious than ever, so. Growing up, 
I never had money or clothes, so that would save more money, you know, for me. Making clothes, it would help me save money. Being that I'm not a fan of being hot, I like making things that are revealing and show skin, shorts and stuff like that. My dream is to own my own clothing line someday. Um, to thread the machine with my eyes closed. <laughs> It's a holiday to help me in my day to day life. I'm getting more clientele with it. Like, people, they want to see my work. It's a blessing. Like, they're helping me make my dreams, you know, a reality. I love my instructors. Like, they, they take their time out to help, you know. And this, sewing is a process. Like, it's not something that, that you could just, like, rush through. You, like, really have to have patience with it. So, like, I'm, I'm appreciative, you know, for them, Miss Regina and Miss Catherine. I'm Regina, and this is my home, and I have my business here, dressmaking and alterations, and I've been teaching at Makehaven with Catherine and Tanelia, and um, we wanted to show you where I work and where my studio is and so on, so come on in. I was born and raised in Hamden. I'm 64 years old, and in 1973, I graduated from high school, Hamden High. And um, before that, I, I started sewing when I was five years old, making Barbie doll clothes. My mother sewed, my sister sewed. We have fabric and sewing machines everywhere. So I really learned at home before I learned in junior high. I was a secretary for a little while. But then I decided I was missing something because all my friends went off to college and they seemed to be having a good time. And so I said, you know what, I'm gonna go to college. So I said, what do I like to do the most? And it was sewing. So I went to college for fashion design. I decided not to go to New York. I decided to go to a small college in Miami, Florida. And it was called Border Fashion College. Um, enjoyed myself immensely. So after college, I came home and um, I worked for this woman in Hamden. I was like the first person she really hired and she found out with the tax bills that I was too expensive to keep. So she let me go and I said to my parents, I said, I'm gonna open up my own business. I can do it. So my parents owned the center of North Haven. My father was a pharmacist and had a pharmacy on the corner of Broadway and Washington. I started my business there in a very small shop that was in 1979. I met Catherine about two years ago, and Catherine runs Tinelia, and she asked me to teach um, sewing, and um, I taught the alterations on how to do alterations, and now Catherine's going to continue and teach them more about intermediate sewing, and, and they're going to do a fashion show.
stores, arts and crafts, fabric, um, yarn, paper, slides, wood, everything you can think of that can be reused is being reused. And we, we try to make it very inexpensive for artists and teachers especially. Hi, I'm Kate from Makehaven. I'm the operations manager here at Makehaven. The program came to us through Catherine of Sinalia and she brought the idea to me and to JR, the executive director here, and we thought it was a really great fit with our mission and what we're trying to do to make things easier for people, to break down obstacles and barriers for, for making, and so it fit a lot with what we were trying to do. We basically tried to support her and her students as best as we can. It's really great to have people from all different walks of life in the space and working together. One of my favorite things is to come in and see people from all generations, all backgrounds, collaborating, working together, meeting each other, discussing the kinds of things they like to make together. It's a really great community. It's just been really cool to see people who may have just a little bit of sewing experience but not really have the means to advance that, to learn the, the more refined skills you might need in order to earn some extra money, design your own things, all of that kind of thing. So bringing the tools to people who need it is something that Makehaven really believes in and so it just seems like a really good fit to have them working with us and I see that's what they're bringing to our community as well. Hi, my name is John Wiley. I'm a part of Tanaya Co-op. Um, what I like about it, we have that diverse group of people, different cultures, different ages, different styles. We do have one male in the program, which sewing is just not for women, it's for men too. I really believe that we're touched on something really good. It's a community program and, and we just need your support. Tina Lea, a charitable organization and a for-profit co-op, has served refugees from the Congo, Syria, Burundi, and Iraq. Also, immigrants from the UK, France, and South America, and the homeless of the New Haven area as they recover from homelessness. It has also helped distressed people from Fairhaven and the Dixwell areas ages 11 to 70 without discrimination of race, gender, ability, or disabilities, and has empowered four entrepreneurs to create small businesses. Tina Lea nonprofit will gladly accept building or space, vehicle, material, equipment, volunteer, and or tool donations, corporate sponsorship, or any other private financial donations providing tax deduction. Together we can significantly reduce poverty in the U.S.